So this is just a quick little, it's not even really a hack, it's just Nuke doesn't contain any object tracking. Um, it has a camera tracker but not an object tracker. So what we're going to look at this time is how to do sort of a very basic object track within uh, using Nuke's camera tracker node. So this is the clip I have, um, just me holding a little box and I taped some um, I put some blue tape on it and, and drew some marks just so I had some more contrast zones to uh, track because the wood was fairly smooth and um, and didn't exactly have a lot of contrast in it. So I wanted something to kind of latch onto the trackers. Uh, even with this, um, I did have some trouble, so we'll go over how that how I got around that. Uh, so the first thing is first is what we're going to do is is as opposed to using the camera tracker to track our scene, we're going to use the camera tracker to, to track just this object. And to do that, we're going to make the assumption that it's the um, camera that's moving around the object as opposed to the object moving uh, around where the camera is still. And you could do this with a moving camera as well. It just, um, this is just a, a little bit more of a straightforward way to get your head around it. So the first thing I want to do is want to make sure that uh, we're not tracking the things that are not moving. Right, so we're we're kind of making sure that uh, the things that aren't moving the rest of the scene is kind of counter. So this is a bit of a squirrely thing uh, to do the object tracking because you need an object with enough difference in parallax and enough difference in in um, shapes and sizes to to actually get uh, this kind of data out of it. And so it can't really be too small on the screen. So the first thing we want to do is roto it out. Um, so I just did a a straight roto. Um, rotoing it uh, pretty close. Uh, we just don't really want anything hanging around. I did try it with a larger roto with some procedural methods, but some of the I got some serious issues. Uh, so I did roto it fairly close uh, to get right in there. Um, <clears throat> there we are. So next thing we want to do is we want to pass that to our camera tracker. Now, t in all honesty, the camera tracker did fail a little bit, so I wanted to make sure that I had a few tracks that existed throughout the entire piece that I could really rely on. So what I did was I created a 2D tracker, right? And if we look, I created um, several tracks here, um, eight tracks, uh, six of which uh, exist throughout most of the scene and two uh, which switch on just to grab the end there. And what I really wanted was just uh, eight tracks that I could absolutely rely on. Um, to deliver uh, the information I, I needed. So I needed these long duration tracks. And so for a bunch of these, you'll, you'll notice with like track one, I have a bunch of keyframes um, that I went in and I adjusted to make sure that it was exactly where I wanted it to be uh, throughout the entire duration. And I did that with all of them, eight tracks. Now when you create a camera tracker node, um, you have this option of adding trackers into it that you've um, gathered from the rest of the um, from the rest of uh, from the 2D track uh, like supervised trackers that you've created instead of automated trackers. And the way to add this to the camera tracker node is to use the use the tracker node the way you would um, and get really solid tracks and take your time with it. Um, and then inside the camera tracker, you do have a users tracks um, uh, section. And what you can do is come over here to Import Tracker. And if I hit Import Tracker, you'll, you'll get a listing of all the trackers that are available in your scene. And in this case, I'm gonna choose Tracker 1 and hit OK. And it's going to load in those tracks um, that came directly from here. And that gives me a nice, reliable solve um, based on um, points that I may uh, really wanna supervise. And there may be times when you need to track something um, if I had measured points on here, I could define the distance between the points. I needed to know where those exact reference points were. Um, and that's when you'd want to use supervised tracks, uh, and, in, and in difficult cases like this one. All right, so when I ran the camera tracker, it, I ran it with a, a fairly dense um, collection of points. And you can see how, you know, in this rotation, because of its motion blur, um, we don't really get to pick up a whole bunch of new, of new points until we get all the way around, which is why I wanted to supervise the tracks. All right, so now we're we're tracking this, um, and you know I got the solve down. Um, you know, definitely used. I shot it on an iPhone, so 
apologize for the poor quality here, but um, you can see it works with a lot of things. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure that I was kind of dialed in with the lens settings. You want to give this as much hope of success as possible. Um, so really what you end up with, uh, I'll take a look at the scene because I did generate a little cube here, is a cube that it fits about right. But instead of the cube moving, uh, we have the camera moving. It is a camera track node after all. Um, and if you get the, and so for this particular, for an object track, uh, we're just making the assumption that the object is still and the camera is what's moving. Uh, this does have some ramifications here. Um, and you'll notice, um, let me just kick over to here. Uh, I have a little quick time here of everything assembled. Oops. Easy to miss. Uh, here's my original clip. Uh, here is the clip with the box uh, matched in. Okay. What I did was then I took I took this camera and this box and I exported it to Maya. And what you see in there is um, as I made a, a new little box here um, that has uh, the detail that I wanted. Now I'm lighting it with an IBL and you'll notice that the IBL moves with the camera and this is because the camera is static and so if we want to make sure that the reflections and the lighting is proper on this uh, object we have to assume that the object is moving through the space and if it's moving through the space it's moving just like the camera here right so um, so we get this and, and you'll notice that here when we see it from the camera's point of view it's the object that's moving you can see our world grid plane there and the uh, the IBL around it is is static right and so then we render that out um, and we can see that when we put it in place it matches right in so that's how you do an object track in, in Nuke um, if you really need to uh, pull one out um, a couple other little things about here is you know Again, I'll always say shoot a clean plate. Um, what I did is I took my roto and I uh, made it bigger um, by use, using a dilate node. And I ran that through to my clean plate. And I can erase out um, any offending uh, imagery that I may have there. And then just brought in my comp uh, here. I had a little chrome ball to make sure I was facing the right way with everything and then of course it just a little matches right in so that's pretty much it um, if you watch the match move video you'll know sort of how to go about that um, and this is just sort of a variation on a camera match uh, by assuming that um, that we just want to match the to the object as opposed to a moving camera that's just a different way of thinking about it right and so yeah just remember that um, you know, we can always think about things in, in different relative terms. Uh, either the object is moving or the camera is moving. The result on the 2D plane is the same, right? So I um, hope that helps. If you ever want to do an object match in Nuke, um, and good luck.